More licenses revoked in 2022 than in any year since 08. That's a pretty big spike, especially since gun sales were skyrocketing, all going up, and they were in inverse relationship to this graph, which is going down. All of a sudden, Biden puts a nominee for an ATF director in place, and they skyrocket in 2022 all the way up there. Isn't that weird how coincidentally the executive bureaucracy, the only tool they have left to achieve their gun control, is being utilized brutally efficiently. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. Guys, what we're going to talk about tonight is something that I'm pretty sure is going to give you pause. Would you believe that the ATF's new data release says there's a 3x increase in closures or forfeitures of FFLs, or dare I say revocations? That's weird. In fact, the most on record since 2006. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. What could have changed in the last year? Oh, I don't know. Some executive overreach. In fact, on our channel, we've been consistently saying since Biden was inaugurated, the legislative was going to get stymied. It did. Nothing happened for them. Then we started talking about the judicial branch. The judicial branch is handing out L's left and right for the most part. Then you're left with the executive bureaucracies, the ATF and the DOJ particularly. Now, what are the odds that all of a sudden, out of nowhere... We're looking at all sorts of FFL dealers that are now breaking the rules at unprecedented rates, almost three times. Now, right out the gate, you can pretty much say there's either been an egregious amount of errors that have been ignored for three, oh, I don't know, what, 10, 15 years now, or all of a sudden a very high intensity on rules that were not being nitpicked. This is something that we got to dive into. Everything's linked in the description box below, and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think on this one. And please send this out because everyone needs to know about this. Now, I'm going to say a quick word from our sponsor, SDI, and then we're going to dive into it. Again, everything will be linked. Now, I know a lot of you out there like to repair and upgrade your own guns. If you're looking for a way to take your hobby to the next level, Sonoran Desert Institute can help. The online programs at SDI cover armor courses, gunsmithing, ballistics, woodworking and finishes, shooting sports management, and more. Plus, all the tools and materials are shipped directly to your door. There's never been a better time to build a career in something that you actually enjoy, so what are you waiting for? There's a link in the description box below, and thank you so much to SDI for making the videos this week possible. But my brothers and sisters, we have got to dive into this because this is coming out of USA News. This is obviously a premier source of information. Let's dive in. Again, it is linked and spread this out. And if you are new, please consider subscribing because we need as many people as we can to get this information out quickly. And thank you for your consideration. All right, let's get this. New data shows ATF gun store revocations at highest rate in 16 years. Hmm, wonder what could be the change. And this is coming out of The Trace. The Trace is a gun control outfit, so you know. Released today. Let's dive into this. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives revoked gun store licenses at a higher rate in 2022 than in any year since 2006 according to data published by the agency Tuesday. So this is data coming from the agency. This is not coming from the NRA, the NSSF. This is not coming from the, uh, the SAF. This is not coming from anywhere except the ATF, the actual bureau responsible for these revocations. Let's keep going. There's lots of stuff you guys need to see. The numbers provide the first indication that federal investigators have cracked down on law-breaking gun dealers following guidance from the Biden administration ordering the agency to take a harsher tack during inspections. So all of a sudden, you have executive power. It changes from Merrick Garland going down, and magically, you have a harder, what does it say, tack during inspections, and you have a 3x increase, the most in 16 years. What do you bet that those infractions were probably not cancel-worthy, but all of a sudden that they are. Let's keep going, because this is something you, everyone needs to know. Altogether, the agency revoked 92 licenses in 2022, roughly 1.3% of all dealers inspected. <laughs> Just wait for that part. The total more than triples the number of licenses revoked in 2021 when a similar number of dealers were inspected. Another 136 dealers received warning conferences, the steepest penalty inspectors can recommend without revocation. So, in sum, you have 91, let's, what was the number? Let's see. Yeah, excuse me, 92 licenses fully revoked, and you had an additional 136 receiving the harshest, uh, not penalty, but harshest warning prior to revocation. That sounds like a pretty big uptick. 
almost around 3%, but let's keep going because they're only talking about revocations. The pandemic hobbled the ATF's ability to conduct compliance inspections at gun stores, and the total number of inspections has yet to rebound to pre-pandemic levels, the data shows. Investigators conducted just over 7,000 inspections in 2022, compared with more than 13,000 in 2019. Still, they revoked more licenses in the past fiscal year than any year since 2008. Okay, so, skirt. So, you had an increase since of 16 years, an increase over 16 years, but you had a 50% reduction in actual inspections. Those numbers are not representing a lot right there. So if you have 50% less uh, actual in, um, FFLs inspected, but you had the largest percentage, that means something is wrong. That is not a normal distribution of data. But let's keep going because that's bad. And I got a graph for you in one second. The ATF's Inspections Division is tasked with ensuring gun dealers comply with federal firearms laws. When inspectors visit a store, they verify that proper records are retained. That's an important one. Inventory is accurate and the customers have under undergone background checks. If they find evidence that a dealer has violated the law, they can recommend penalties ranging from verbal or written warnings to the revocation of a store owner's license to sell firearms. That first one, proper records are retained. I'm working on lining up an interview with someone you guys will rec recognize all around that point. In fact, when this was going on prior to this year, that was the main point in contention. It was about record keeping on spelling. It was record keeping on address. It was not on no background checks or lack of inventory. It's really important to understand that what they're doing here, because while I am not an FFL, that is my disclaimer, it does not bode well for the statistics and the data that I just showed you earlier on. But here's the first graph for you. Check that out. More licenses revoked in 2022 than in any year since 08. That's a pretty big spike, especially since gun sales were skyrocketing, all going up, and they were in inverse relationship to this graph, which is going down. All of a sudden, Biden puts a nominee for an ATF director in place, and they skyrocket in 2022 all the way up there. Isn't that weird how coincidentally the executive bureaucracy, the only tool they have left to achieve their gun control, is being utilized brutally efficiently. Let's keep going. Got one more thing for you. In June 2021, the Biden administration took steps to curb this leniency, referring to letting people off the hook with warnings. Issuing guidance that ordered inspectors to implement a zero tolerance policy and revoke the licenses of dealers who willfully sell to prohibited purchasers or sell guns without conducting background checks, among other violations. Zero tolerance policy, and remember what I said earlier, proper record keeping, spelling errors, address errors, things of that nature. This is incredibly important, and the guest that I have coming on pretty soon is going to go into a few more of these details that have, they have firsthand acknowledged, excuse knowledge, but that I do not have. And that's what I've got for you guys. Make sure you send this one out. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you on the next episode. I'm Braden. See you later.